up youtubers and thanks for joining uh, me again we're on a very bright sunny crisp morning so i might be in the shade or in the shadows so apologize if you can't see me uh, i'm today i'm actually at lomo part of uh, bradford and the reason being is there was a a bit of a disaster it might be a bit of an understatement but a bit of a disaster in 1916 but before we start, today is the 11th of September and I've deliberately uploaded this deliberately uploaded this video today because I want to dedicate this video to all the firefighters across the world we know they've got a dangerous job to do and also the casualties and the people that died in the incident that I'm just going to mention that happened in 1916 in Lomo just across there so I am actually in Victoria Park in Lomo but across there you can't obviously see it other side of the fields other side of the the trees was the major explosion in a munitions factory and I think they were actually dealing with the uh, <clears throat> chemicals uh, called picric acid and various other uh, chemicals that were used for explosions. Remember, we were at the height of World War I and we're talking 1916 here. And this was a major disaster that happened in Bradford that shook Bradford and shook Lowmore community upside down into despair. And this, this story is quite complicated, it's long, so many twists and turns, but the point of me being here is, I want to show you the site where it actually happened, the explosions. I want to take you to the, to the graves of the six firemen that died on site, as well as 36 other people that died during the disaster. I mean, I don't really know where other people are buried, but I will take you to Schoolmore Cemetery where the six firemen lay at rest. Please do sus subscribe to the channel, like, share, because there is another twist to this story when I take you to the Schoolmore Cemetery. So let's, let's just walk around, let's have a bit of a chat. Uh, like I said, these videos are more visual. There's so much information about this incident on the internet. And if you're interested in this kind of a, a video, the heritage of Bradford, please do uh, just Google the story. I think it's called the Lomo Explosion, 1916. I'm meeting a couple of really nice people from the local Lomo history group, and they've done a lot of research in this incident. They're called Jeff and Mary and uh, I will meet them shortly actually to be honest and they're gonna show me the uh, the, the actual location because I have I've actually been here last week and I struggled to find the location because as you know Lomo is an industrial site many twists and turns and uh, it's not easy to find the location sometimes so I'm looking forward to have a quick chat with uh, Jeff and Mary and uh, yeah, we'll just walk around. Just round here. Sorry, I'm just gonna take you to this plaque. I've just noticed a plaque at the entrance of uh, Victoria Park. I believe there are a couple of plaques. This is the main one I'm gonna take you now to the entrance of the park. And there's one near the site of the explosion where I believe uh, <clears throat> Jeff and uh, Mary instigated and uh, organized that plaque. Yeah, I think this is it here. Yeah. Right. Like I said, this is one of the plaques. And the other plaque is just across there near the site which we'll see later on so here here it is 
the low mo explosion. Happened on the 21st of August 1916. So there you go, we'll, uh, let's catch up with uh, Mary, sorry, let's catch up with Jeff and Mary, I think they've just arrived. Um, I'm really looking for, forward for this because I couldn't find the actual site where the explosion happened. And obviously these two uh, local personalities have done their own re research off their own backs. Uh, got a helicopter there. Sorry about the noise. Right, I've just spotted Jeff and Mary who've just uh, landed in the car park of Victoria Park. And of course, I've got my partner in crime, <laughs> Imtiaz. Just a quick intro about yourselves before we actually find this site where the explosion yeah. happened. Yeah. Uh, we run Lomar Local History Group. And have done since 1995, haven't we? 1995. Yeah. 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 I'm very much a local historian and a family historian. Oh, right, okay. And Jeff is involved in well both of us are involved in Bradford Antiquarians right okay yeah. right yeah. I know there's a number of books on literature you've done but we'll talk about that on yeah. the way ideally we'd love to find this site because it's a bit of a nightmare around here it's a massive place yeah, yeah. and we'll look at some of the plaques yeah. dedicated to the firemen and the, uh, the people who've actually passed away so and we think that this is down there so looking at the map is it this way around uh, or is it which way around is it if we're looking at it from we are stood we're here in Victoria Park. Yeah, okay, so, so it's the other way. Yeah. Right, so, so if, if we, you turn that round. Yeah, if we turn that round. Now, yeah. I don't know if you did at school whether you did what maps look like. Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> From the era. Yeah, <laughs> because if you look at there, you can see that that is an embankment yep. up. Okay, I can see that, yeah. And so is that. Is that for the train lines? Yeah, and yet yeah. now it's so far down. Do you know mm. what I mean? So you can see, you can imagine just how low that was yeah. and what you can't see here is that that is a very big cliff and the towers was up there sort of um, round about where the, where the, so um, the cooling towers or something like that no, 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 no I'm neighbor. sorry they called it the tower towers, the okay. towers Dye was the dye works right, yeah. okay. and the low more uh, munitions works were in a dip and we understand that because of because it was so far down in a dip with an escarpment behind it mm. that it, it concentrated the blast right. that way and that's why some areas suffered know, more than suffered others, more yeah. Than the wall of the gas works that blew up. Right. So if you look at... If you look at that, these buildings, you will, they're all brick and you'll see the back of that of that brick building on there. All oh, right, oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's just the... I believe this is the back of the gas works building. When the explosion happened, um, there kept being loads of debris, and some of the some of the debris flew up and pierced the gas holder. Right. See there, and that's what we've seen the back of. Right. Okay. Right. So yeah. we're going to come here, and then when we get to the plaque, the chemical works are down a big dip on the other side of that track. Right. So when we get there, we'll show you that. Okay. So this this is actually the, the this railway. Is the actual railway. This was railway, this yeah. Was railway. Right, yeah. yeah. This, this in actual fact uh, goes all the way from well from from Bailey, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, um, and right through to Dewsbury. You can walk all that mm. way. Yeah. 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 There's a big article in the TNA about the unveiling of this plaque. Let's have a look. No, I don't think that, no. no, but no. if you're there, if, if, if you, you know, like nowadays when you get the opportunity to name a street, mm. if you owned it, yeah. and it's, it's Sugden is a Sugden Zerl. Yeah, um, we we were uh, we realised when we were doing our research uh, that. Uh, Although there was a plaque, sort of a general plaque re relating to the, the people who died, and there was the, the fireman's monument, there was never, uh, never been any names uh, of the actual people who died. So we worked, uh, and uh, my wife Mary and our friend uh, Barbara Reardon 
work to do a, a lot of research on the people who died and produced a book uh, about all the individual people who died. Right. Um, What's the name of the book, sorry? It's, it, the a book is called Yellow Poppies. Yellow and it's poppies. called that because poppies, of course, are a memorial. And yellow was the colour that many people uh, who worked there it be, 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 uh, became sort of yellow in colour through working through the picric acid. And they, right. you could tell people apparently yeah. who worked there because of the, of the yellow skin. Yeah. Yeah. Called canaries. And it, the nickname was canaries. canaries people right. referred to them as canaries. Um, so we worked on, on the book and then we thought, well, we really need a plaque and we really need it somewhere where as near as possible to the site but where people were coming past and so we put it on the greenway which is the old railway track uh, here uh, and uh, the the plaque is here it says near this site on the 21st of August 1916 a fire at the Lowmore Munitions Company caused a massive explosion which killed 40 people and over 100 were injured it was 39 when we, when we started researching but we found a, another person as well uh, do you want to say something? Yeah, I'll just say about Thomas, Thomas Woodfine. One of them was down as an unknown male and he was buried as an unknown person. Right. And we found what I suppose now would be the equivalent of the health and safety reports. And we found one for a man called Thomas Woodfine and it said that the result had been fatal but we couldn't find his death. Right. And we got the registrar and she got worried yeah. in case they'd missed it off. Yeah. And they couldn't find it. And then we got onto the coroner who after a lot of messing about and lots of fancy language said that he wouldn't have been able to have been identified right like we could nowadays by dna and we understand that these firemen some of these firemen every fireman had a number and on, it was on his collar and it was also on his axe mm. and we understand that they were identified not from the body but from the position of the axe next to some right. remains so they couldn't you know, they couldn't, be hard to, uh, it, it, they couldn't identify. They were so badly burnt, so in badly burnt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. noticed the manager as well passed away. Yeah, yeah. that was um, John Major. That was John Major. Yeah. Right. He, came, he came from uh, uh, Lux uh, Luxembourg. He came from Luxembourg. Luxembourg, yeah. 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 And right. he, li he lived down Wyke and they thought he'd survive because he climbed out of the yeah. debris, debris. Mm -hmm. uh, in, on the afternoon yeah. and went, they took him home and yeah. he died. Well, yeah. for anybody who wants to come down, there is actually a little location yes, plan there. Is, there. Yes, there is, yeah. yeah. But look at look at the uh, the explosion site. It's massive. It's massive, yeah. yeah. Between North Bali and Wyke, so hmm. this must be part of the beck, and it must come from. They must have found it somewhere below, you know. Hmm. Oh, this is what we're pulling, Judy Woods balsam. It's our enemy. So right now we're heading towards the actual explosion site. Like I said, Lowmore is quite a massive site. It's like a maze. So I'm glad uh, our friends have uh, helping us out in finding the location. It has been, been raised by that one. So and so it's that all down there. there. Yeah. Is that where the explosion happened? Yeah, down, down, down there, right. yes. Down yeah. there, yeah. So that is a landfill site, yeah? It's, yeah. it's all a landfill site, right. is this, yeah. So this is the back of the, of the building and the front would have been facing the, the railway. I mean the modern. Uh, no, the there, were, there were a lot of there were a lot of buildings. buildings yeah. There were a lot of yeah. What what we don't understand, they were, they were up against an escarpment, and we, we we don't know where the escarpment was. Yeah. Because they, they were the other the other building was higher up. So, somewhere. Up here. So this would have been. So this is it, folks. Um, probably the most uh, devastating industrial fire in uh, British history and it happened right here and as you've heard earlier on it's a landfill site going down 40 feet but just being here just gives you that sense of uh, I don't know what the word is. It's quite eerie, to be honest. It's yeah. A quicker way back. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. For people like me, yeah, there's no, a quicker way back. And this is a. <laughs> this, is, this is now a. This is now a, a local nature reserve, which is interesting. So those are just quick highlights of the little walk we've done uh, around the the section of the explosion site, and I like to thank them for taking the time out 
um, they were only highlights because of so much information very interesting story but now I need to quickly take you to the Schoolmore Cemetery to show you the resting place of the six firemen that perished on the day right I've just spotted this on my way to uh, Schoolmore and I think it's something to do with the ironworks but there's a plaque here let's have a look yeah it is about the ironworks no wonder I could smell quite a lot of iron on the way here it's a pretty bad smell you can tell from a mile it's uh, all ironworks on this region right I've just landed at Schoolmore Cemetery um, Ah, it was about a 10 minute drive I think if that so let's have a look at this uh, memorial site where the uh, six firemen are laid to rest if you ever decide to come and uh, look at the memorial it's on the uh, necropolis roadside of the uh, cemetery and uh, just across there is the uh, garden of remembrance so i'll just take you down and let's have a look at this memorial <coughs> i can see it from here actually it's uh it's quite distinctive in the sense that i've got a feeling it's got a new fence around it or some kind of metal railing there that's the one there you go I don't like walking over graves but I just can't, <coughs> can't really help it to be honest can you read that? Station so the name of uh, six firemen there, do you want to read them out? Yeah, station officer Charles Sugden fireman Knighton uh, Pridmore, Fireman Fred Normington, Fireman Eli Buckle, Fireman Edgar Shaw, and the last fireman is named as Joseph Edmund Binns. So, the sad thing about this uh, side of the story is, uh, in March 1924, a monument I think it was around about 15 feet was erected on this site in Schoolmore but unfortunately uh, through vandalism the monument was actually moved in 2003 to the West Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Service headquarters in Birkinshaw and that's going to be our next stop we're going to have a look at the original monument that was moved from Schoolmore across there. Now it was a job and a half because Birkinshaw, as you know, is on the boundary of Kirklees Council and Bradford Council. So they had to fight for planning permission. And plus around that time, I think this monument was actually listed as grade two. So as you know, if something's listed, it's a, a tricky job to do uh, <coughs> some modification on it, restore it and move it. So hats off to the people involved. I think it was the, uh, the fireman from what I've read that was at service at the time that got together, set up a campaign and I think around about £25,000 they put together to do the restoration and the <coughs> re reallocation of the monument to Birkinshaw. Although this uh, video is tailored around the monument and the, the, the disaster itself and also we talked quite a lot about the, the six policemen but we should never forget and always remember all the other casualties and the people that died on that awful day. So here it is, the original memorial that came from Schoolmore in 2003 to the West Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Service headquarters in Birkinshaw.
personally I think it's actually in the right place now deservedly it's in the right place because this is where the jobs lay and this is what they were passionate about so rightly so in the grounds of this amazing fire station in Birkinshaw so there you go folks thanks very much for joining us and watching this uh, important piece of uh, Bradford history I want to give a special thanks to uh, Mark Nicholson who brought this story to my attention and I want to give a, a big thanks to uh, Jeff and Mary for joining us and showing us the, the site where the actual explosions happen so from now until then peace out